So as you come onto your mat, hands and knees. Um, I'm going to get Loki to go and lay down on this spot. Okay. All right. So um, go ahead and come onto your hands and knees, all fours. As you do this, you um, some of you, if you have wrist tend uh, tenderness, you can always roll up the end of your mat so that the heel of your hand is on a rolled up edge and then your fingertips are more on the floor. If you're practicing on carpet, sometimes uh, carpet has a little extra padding, so just be aware of that. I wouldn't put it on anything softer that can give, so a yoga mat is probably your best option. As we move around here, you're gonna do maybe starting off with your standard cat-cow, Exhaling, rounding the spine high. Inhaling, dropping the belly and turning the face and tailbone upward. And so as you go back and forth in your breath, exhale, rounding, inhale, dropping the belly. At any point that you feel as though becoming a little more organic, moving around, circling the head and the neck is proper for you, do so. When, I've got echo in here, I don't hear it. Um, when you come into your yoga practice, when you first come into your yoga practice just moving around and adjusting and feeling your spine so the whole menagerie of animals are going to join me for yoga obviously there you go um the cat won't lay down with the dog over <laughs> so uh, moving around as you come into your practice we want to make sure that we are not Forcing any areas of discomfort dealing with back issues um, and that we are trying to move places in the spine that are not as mobile as they should be. So if your upper back is a little stiff, maybe that's where you want to focus some more movement. For some of us, a large majority of Americans will have back issues, low back issues. Typically what I see is low back issues and then like neck and shoulder issues, right? Rarely do we see kind of a thoracic mid-back kind of thing. I need to stop your nose. Go somewhere. Seriously. <laughs> I can't shut the door because it cuts off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> we have animals. We have, we have animals. And so just make sure that you're not pressing into pair areas of pain and that you're moving areas that are not as mobile as they should be. Maybe circling the head, the neck, the hips, the shoulders. What would feel good? Don't be don't scratch on the mat. No one your mat to do that. From here, I'm going to ask you to extend your left leg out behind you. Push your dog off your mat. Swing the leg over to the right side. So my left foot go, went all the way over to the right side of my body. And I'm going to push back through that left heel. I'm going to take my upper body and also arc it over to the right. So I have this big um, banana shape from back foot to the crown of the head. I might even turn and look at the back foot as I drop my chin towards my right inner arm. And now I'm going to ask you to come back center. We're going to pick the right leg up, do the same thing with the right leg. And so kick the leg back, swing the leg over to the left, let it slide back so you feel some stretch in the calf muscle through your heel. Take the upper body, shift the upper body as well to the left, kind of creating this long arcing curve from your back foot all the way through the crown of your head. And then coming center. We're going to take a moment here. Some of you might be comfortable coming back into a child's pose. That is good for you. If you want some support, you can always take a blanket or a bolster underneath your child's pose. And so wherever you're at, we're just going to start to breathe. I'd like you to feel the breath come in through the back ribs as they expand. 
the sides of the waist and the sides of the rib cage, filling that accordion opening. And then across the front of the chest, maybe hold the breath for a beat or two and then soften, exhale it out. You're still in my shot. Wonderful. We're going to come center, come up onto all fours after feeling that nice, smooth, rhythmic breath. Let's go into our down dog. So I'm going to ask you to tuck your toes, let your hips come into down dog. So feet are, can be a little wider than usual today. So maybe even take the feet to the edges of your mat. And you're going to shift the, the hips a little left and right. You might bend one knee and super straighten the other, other leg. Whatever it is that feels good to you. With your legs wide, you probably won't want to lift a leg up. You'll probably want to stay planted onto all fours as much as you can. Make sure that your head and neck moves around, that you're nice and mobile. Feeling the breath start from the low belly all the way up to the top of the rib cage. And then as you exhale out, really squeeze the low belly to squeeze the breath out and keep that low belly mildly active. Let the back of the neck draw along. The jaw will soften. Very good. Now move your feet together and you're going to take your left foot underneath you and over to the right. So um, I'm kind of tucking in under there. Yeah, both my hips are up for four, three, two, and one. Let's do the other side. So we're just going to take that right leg underneath us for four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. From here, I'm going to ask you to slowly walk your feet towards the top of the mat. Take the feet nice and wide. Toes are still at 12 o'clock position. Heels are hidden behind the second and third toe. Knees are gently bent. As you grab a hold of the forearm, lacing the thumbs in the, in the creases of the elbows. Sorry, I got to get my dog out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. There. There you go. And start to sway the upper body left and right. In through the nose, out through the nose. Come to the center and come to stillness. Switch the cross of your arms. So whatever forearm was on bottom is now on top. You're going to turn your head left and right in the no motion. And up and down in a yes motion. You're going to drop your hands. Let them come just above your knees. Drop your hips. Roll all the way up to standing. Once you arrive, stand tall at the top of your mat. Do some reverse shoulder shrugs, some neck circles at the top of the pose. Wonderful. Maybe even a little Tibetan drum. Feet are four inches apart, second toes are straight forward. Heels are hidden behind second and third toe. Wonderful. We're going to start off with some gentle top end flow, which means we're just going to stay standing at the top of our mat. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Hands to your shins. Inhale, come halfway up. Flatten your back and firm your legs. Exhale, forward fold again. 
Inhale, comes all the way up, reaches up, stretches up. Let's the hands come down along the sides. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward fold, melt into the legs with the face curl into the shins. Hands come onto the shins as you lengthen the spine, corseting the waist, pressing the fronts of the feet down. Hands down, forward fold, deeper, curling the face in between the shins. Inhale, comes all the way up, reach up, stretch up. Exhale, hands at the sides. One more of those. Inhale, sweep the arms up, reach up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Hands to shins, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Hands at the sides, mountain pose. Feet remain four inches apart. We're going to do another aspect of a top end flow. Inhale, sweep your arms up and out like you're serving a platter. Sit back into your chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, Betty Boop. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair, sweep those arms up. With your exhale, drop the hands, stand tall, mountain pose. Adding on, inhale into your chair. Exhale, left arm comes across the top of both thighs. And then you'll inhale, right arm to the sky. Hey, you stop that nonsense, cat. Clawing up my yoga mat, sorry. <laughs> She wants my attention for something. And lower the hands forward, fold, hips go up. Inhale comes back into your chair pose. Exhale, right forearm comes across both legs. Inhale, left arm goes high. Making sure your knees aren't, the right knee isn't sliding back, but the both of the knees are level the top of your mat. Three, two, and one. Exhale, forward fold. We're going to inhale, belly boop. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Mountain pose, standing tall. Wonderful. Inhale, chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Betty Boop, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. Stand tall, mountain pose. We're going to step back with the right foot. We're going to come into a warrior two position. And so you have the longest step you have available, meaning that your arms are extended and your feet are underneath your wrist. So front knee is bent at a 90 degree or as close to it as possible. The back leg is straight. You have a heel to arch alignment. So your heel draws a straight line towards your back arch. Your chest is directly over your pelvis. Gazing in and over the front hand. Wonderful hands to hips. We're going to tick tock our feet and do the exact same pose on the other side. And so as we come into the pose on the other side, extending the arms out, gazing in through the nose, gazing as we look over the hand, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. And then go ahead and come center. Turn those toes to the side of your mat. We're going to slide the hands down the front of the legs until we come to the ankles. We're going to drop our head forward. Make sure that your second toes are at 12 o'clock. The sides of your feet are parallel to the edges of your mat. Let the head hang down if you're like me and 
just have a really long torso, I am going to shorten my stance so my head isn't on the floor. Feel the weight rock a little forward towards the front of the feet. Feel the weight rock towards the heels just slightly. Feel the weight rock forward towards the front of the feet, lifting the inner thighs upward. Staying here, breathing for four more. Three. Two. And one. Bring your hands above the knee. Flatten your back. I mean, halfway up. And then push the floor away, come all the way up, nice and soft. Very good. Take the arms out, airplane the arms, turn the left foot to the top of the mat again. Keep the legs straight without hyperextending the knee, so really push the floor away. Slide the left inner hip in as you lean out over that left leg. Let the fingertips rest on the thigh or the shin as you take the right arm up for triangle posture. I'm going to tick tock and go to the other side. And so as you slide out over that right leg, we got open the arms up. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Utilize your inhale to come up. You're going to take top the feet to the side of the mat again so that you're at a 12 o'clock position. I'm going to turn around so that you can see. I want you to drop your hands behind your back, braiding the fingers so that the palms come together. Notice that this way feels normal. Take whatever set of fingers are number two and make them number one in the lineup, and it'll feel odd. That's where we want to get. All right, I'm going to take the shoulder blades and slightly squeeze them together behind me as though I'm pinching a feather, not a pencil, right? And I'm going to come forward as I pinch that feather. I'm going to let the knuckles reach up and the head stretch down. And so feeling the knees unlock. So unlock the knees, rock the weight a little forward towards the balls of the feet, but glue the heels down. There you go. Now exhale all of your air out, draw that low belly back and you'll be able to curl in with the exhale and get deeper. Yeah, very nice. Nice thing for you. For four more. Three. Two. One. Take the hands just above the knees, bend the knees a little bit and come halfway up. And then come all the way up. Very good. From here, I'm going to ask you to step back to the top of the mat and find a little um, Tibetan drum and just kind of shake all of that off. Anything going on in the body? It's unseasonably cold for May 21st out there. My body is talking about it today. Maybe yours is. So just taking that gentle flow at the top end again. Let's inhale and sweep the arms up as we sit into our chair this time. Exhale, left arm comes down. Inhale, right arm reaches up. But this time you're going to let that right hand come down, just tap the outer right ankle. You're going to inhale, let it go up. Exhale, brings it down. Inhale, takes it up. Exhale, brings it down. Inhale, take it up. And exhale, take it down. 
Inhale, takes it up. And exhale, takes it down for a fold. Turn the head left and right. Wonderful. Inhale into your chair pose. Exhale, right forearm comes over. over. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Inhale, the left arm goes up. Exhale, it comes down and touches the outer ankle. Inhale, comes up. Make sure your knees are not diving in. They're directly over your heels. They're not rolling out, bow-legged, and you're not knocking me. Right? Arm goes up. And it comes down. Last one. Arm goes up. And then the hands both come down as you fold. Very good. From here, I'm going to ask you to plant your hands down and step back to a down dog again. Wonderful. We're going to pedal the feet, move around, wag the tail. Then left and right stuff. Wonderful. Let's come down. Find a child's pose. Big toes are together. If you want to get your bolster or a rolled up blanket, it's appropriate at this time. And so just lay here, feel your child's pose, feel the breath come through your, those hips and feel how the child's pose feels um, the experience of it is different than it was earlier. Maybe the breath is different. Maybe the hips sit lower. Maybe the hips feel softer. If you're on a support like me and you have your head turned in one direction, we're going to rotate the head in the opposite direction now. Wonderful. Go ahead and come up. We're going to um, move my bolster out of the way. Make sure you have a blanket or a towel or something for the next um, little round. You're going to tuck your toes under. Grab a, my dog's on my blanket. All right. Um, let me grab a blanket real quick. Um, <laughs> cat cow for me. Wonderful. All right, sorry guys. I have to get away from my other one is in use. All right, so what I'm gonna ask you to do, so you're cat cowing for a moment. You're gonna take your blanket and maybe roll it up and make a, a good size roll. You're gonna put it behind your calf muscles and thighs. Toes are tucked under and you're gonna sit back onto that blanket. This is gonna give you a little bit of a calf smash, but it's also gonna work your feet. I know. All right, so see me, the toes are tucked under, pretty close up behind my knees. Yeah. In for the nose and out for the nose for four more. Three. Two and one. Wonderful. Come over, tops of the feet down, sit back on the blanket again. Wonderful. <laughs> Release. Go ahead and take that roll. I have to smooth mine out because I did a messy roll. But go ahead and keep your roll. We're going to use it behind us here. So I'm going to ask you to lay down onto your spine. We're going to do some bridging and some ab stuff um, before we move into our deep stretchy stuff. So I'm going to ask you to lay back so that your hips and your butt is on the um, on the roll of the blanket. My feet are planted down and um, preparing to do bridge postures. At first, this feels good. You know, just let it push on your tailbone and your sacrum. Feel your feet plant firmly into the mat. Maybe even feel your fingertips reach down toward the heels.
Now make sure the feet are planted, push the floor away, lift the hips up, breathing for four, three, two, and before you lower down, make sure you tuck that tailbone really good, lower back down onto the blanket. If you need to do little adjustments, do so. We're gonna take the right leg high, and we're gonna circle the ankle clockwise and counterclockwise for several rounds each way. And now you're gonna let the left leg float as it extends out and circle both ankles for five, four, three, two, one. Change the direction. Five, four, three, two, and one. Wonderful. Keep the legs as they are. You're gonna let the right leg just drop out to the right side of several inches. Not all the way, because you want your left foot off the floor. Yep, it's deep abs. Adjust that block if you, or the blanket if you need to. So try to push the foot out to the right, push the left foot down towards the end of the mat. So I'm creating an L shape in my legs for four more. Left foot off the floor, three, no resting, two, yes, let your kitty come in and help you too. And one, bring both legs up to the sky. Wonderful. Go put the right foot down onto the floor. Take, keeping the left foot to the sky, do some circles clockwise and counterclockwise. Wonderful. From here, take the right leg, extend it out to a float or a hover. Holding. <laughs> I love how the cats are just so fascinated with the cameras. It's as though they know, actually, it's as though the animals know something's going on. My cat is never, or my daughter's cat is never disinterested in me. All right, take the leg out to the side now and hold. Keep that right leg up, don't let it fall to the floor, don't let it move out to the right, move the right leg back on the mat, left leg extends out to the side. There you go, for four, three, two and one legs to the ceiling. Wonderful. Keeping the feet together, drop the legs out of 45 degrees, out towards the tail of your mat, in through the nose, out through the nose, suction the waistline in, navel the spine for four more. Three, two, and one. Feet come down onto the mat, Fingers reach down towards the heels, shoulder blades tuck under, press up off that blanket into your bridge pose and hold. Feel the breath coming in through the nose. Feel the expansion and length down the spine. And slowly lower those hips down. Make sure your tailbone's a little tucked and a little, little scooped and it feels like your low back is hanging kind of free towards the earth. I'd like you to take your legs out wide. So my blanket is really close to my tailbone, right? And then you should feel this nice opening through the front of the hips. Lay the hands on the lower belly and just feel the breath come in through the nose and out through the nose. Feel the rise and the fall of the tummy. Feel the length down the sides of the waist.
Wonderful, bring those feet in. Feet are to the edge of the mat for this bridge. So nice and wide, right? Fingers down, lift those hips up, bridge, nice wide leg bridge. Don't let the knees roll out wider than the feet though, right? Feeling this nice, almost a squeeze between the inner thighs for four more. Three. Two. And one. Lowering the hips back down. Take those legs back out into that V shape. Make sure your low back feels long, the tailbone feels slightly tucked, and the stretch is in through the front of the hip itself. In through the nose and out through the nose. Wonderful. Bring your feet back in. Lift your hips up. Turn your blanket so now it goes up and down with your spine and your tailbone. And it's coming to about my lowest rib. It's not up on my rib cage. That doesn't feel very good. But it's kidney area down to tailbone and probably extending out more than that. We're going to take the legs up to the sky for supported shoulder stand. So you'll notice because we're on this blanket, you're, you have to control it with your low belly. So feel your low belly draw it in and then feel yourself control the wobble off of each side of the blanket, maybe even extend your arms out. Extend your arms out so that the arms are extending along the sides of the hips, the palms are pressing down. Reaching the feet upward, reaching the shoulders downward. Wonderful. Take the legs wide now and really hold yourself with your core and your balance. Okay. Wonderful. Bend the knees, put the feet down, lift the hips up, slide that blanket out from behind you, lay the back down, and just feel any sensations in your spine and your hips as you lay in stillness on the floor for a moment. So take a moment to absorb what it feels like to lay down without doing a lot of fidgeting. Wonderful. I'm going to ask you to grab the backs of the knees. You might rock a little left and right. A little head to tail. And then come up to seated position just long enough to take this roll. Now, some of you might need to unroll it a little bit, and that's appropriate. Some people might even need to put a block underneath the base of their head. I suggest unrolling this a little bit instead of blocking your head, right? 
but we're going to do an upper back bend over this. So I'm going to lay my, my, my heart over it. It's still underneath the level of my shoulder blade. It's probably about where my sports bra body is, right? As I extend the arms over the head and I get now this upper body stretch, we worked with the inner hips and the low groin just a moment ago. We want to work a little more chest, pectoral, rib cage area, right? And so as you feel that extension down the side of your body, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Just let your body expand. Let the breath become long too. So if, you're, if your knees are still bent, you can take your feet a little wider than normal, but then turn your, not off your mat, just a little wider than normal. Turn the toes inward slightly and the knees should just fall in on each other. It's easier to hold the position. Um, seeing there, we're gonna stay here and truly try to expand the breath out. So what I ask of you is to try this breath work today. You're gonna inhale right up to the very top fullness of your inhale. Stay there for a moment. And then you're gonna take another little sip of inhale as though you're like topping off your gas tank. And then you're gonna hold that for as long as humanly possible without feeling like you're gripping at it, right? You're just gonna like pause, 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 pause until you Feel the need to let it go. You're gonna do the long, longest, longest exhale that you can and then repeat the process. So it's an inhale to your fullest, pause, pop your tank off, hold, extremely long, slow exhale. So everyone has a different lung capacity. I'm gonna let you do this one on your own. Wonderful. If you can bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees butterfly open now. And even maybe take cactus arms at this point. Now, if that's uncomfortable, then get rid of the cactus arms or put support underneath the edges of your thighs. But we're really trying to peel open the whole front of the body right now. Still maintaining that breath work where we're breathing deep, feeling the expansion of the inhale, a pause, a topping off of your tank. 
a long, gentle pause and a smooth, controlled exhale. Wonderful. I'm going to ask you to bring your knees together if they're butterflies. Maybe slowly roll over to one side without doing too much commotion. Move that blanket out from underneath you and come flat onto your back and just experience what your spine feels like laying there in stillness. Just kind of absorb the residuals of that posture. What does that posture leave you with? How do you feel? Where did it affect you? Now I'd ask you to take your arms out T-shape, pick your hips up and scoot them to the right side of your mat and put it back down. Yeah. Now bring your knees into your chest and drop the knees to your left. There you go. Yep, 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 yep. So you move the hips away from the direction that you're, that you're uh, twisting. That allows your spine to be a little straighter and longer for feminine shapes. If you were a skinny Indian boy, we wouldn't have to move you, <laughs> move your hips over, frankly. If you're over 12, you probably need to move your hips as a, as a female, right? We're gonna allow the top leg to come up first, followed by the bottom leg, right? And then put the feet down, pick the hips up, move them center, and then do a knee hug before we do the other side. Ah, yummy. Put the feet down. You're gonna pick the hips up, move them deeply to your left now, and then pay, pull your knees into your chest, drop the knees to the right. Wonderful. So your breath is smooth and rhythmic. There's not anything major going on with it now. We've um, expanded the breath. We've slowed it down towards the, the end of this practice. <laughs> Let the top knee come up, followed by the bottom. Put the feet down, move your hips center of the mat. And then do anything that feels good, knee hugs, happy baby, rolling head to tail. Got, you know, about a little minute to kind of whim and wiggle around. Get all your little fidgets, all your little wiggles out.
So I have been leading Shavasana and pretty much letting you guys stay there for as long as you can. So if you want to extend out into your Shavasana, maybe even put the blanket behind your knees. That feels really yummy or over your body. A lot of times our home, our homes are not as warm as my studio. Um, cover your eyes. Start to imagine me coming around with the lavender cloths and, and pressing your shoulders and the warm stones and all that fun stuff, right? And once you get settled, I'm going to just lead you through a gentle breath work. And I'm going to let you stay in your meditation. I will namaste, give you a namaste. And I ask you to stay in your meditation for as long as available to you today. So first, let's just pay attention to the breath. We had um, a couple different um, breath exercises throughout this class. This time, we're just going to notice the breath to start off with. How does it feel? Where does it feel like it starts? Where do you feel like it ends? Where do you feel like you, do you feel like you breathe into the left lung more than the right or the upper lungs more than the lower lungs? Kind of just take a moment or two to investigate the breath. And then I want you to feel your inhales and exhales. And as you inhale, kind of get a number count for how long your inhale is. And so if you're inhaling and it's a four, three, two, one, take a gentle pause and then try to exhale for up to eight. So your exhale would stretch out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, there's a gentle pause in the breath. And then you start the inhale for four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Now let that go with your own cadence, your own rhythm, your own mind following the breath. If going to eight is too much for you, six is fine. Just start to feel the expansion of the breath, start to feel the awareness of the breath actually moving. Continue on if your mind wanders from the place of the breath, the cadence and the count of the breath. Just bring the mind back. This too is exercise. It's just a mental exercise. You feel like you can Take the breath a little longer.
Now let go of the counting and just let the breath become smooth and rhythmic, natural to you. Still minding the breath, still watching the breath. Seeing your body for places of tension, places that you can let go of a little more. And then from the neck and the jaw, low back. Close off. The shoulders grow heavier with each exhale. And your little heart is light and buoyant. A sense of gratitude and joy welling up from inside. And a sense of peace with each inhale. I ask you to stay with your meditation for as long as you possibly can today. I wish you a beautiful afternoon. Namaste.